So I really break the four seasons into what it would be six, I guess, or five, right? Okay. So winter is its own season. Okay. You can call it early winter or late winter. It's winter. But then I've got early spring, late spring, early summer, late summer, early fall, late fall. Okay. Right? So to break that down a little more, um, winter would to me would be mid-November to the first part of March. First part of March to middle of April, early spring. Middle of April to the end of May, late spring. Beginning of June to the middle of July, early summer, middle of July or beginning of July, if you will, to end of August, first of September, late summer. Okay. And then September, October, early and late fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I, I really don't guide smallmouth in the winter at all. I, it's, I, I, I switch to walleye. Um, something a little more reliable, something a little more cold water. These fish, a lot of these fish will back out of the river and get into the lake. Um, and the water temperature's down. They don't need to eat as much. So winter to me is a time to catch walleye and float the rivers by myself. Okay. With no one else. Mm. Early spring and the spring season itself is when we start seeing, you know, I have this table, if, you, if you've ever been in sales, you know the old saying, up and to the right is always best, right? So if sure. your sales chart is up and to the right, everything's better. Well, water temperature is the same way. November, it's up, it's down and to the left, right? So it'll start out warm and drop through the day or through the night. Um, in the spring, and early spring is when we start seeing that water temperature start cold and in the middle of the day start climbing up regularly into the 50s um that's when we typically see our first rains so we're coming out of low flows of winter although the past three or four winters have been ridiculously mm -hmm. wet yeah um but on a typical year you know that early spring time is when we start seeing fish move back into the river and venturing out of those winter holes and looking for something to eat that's okay. kind of when everything wakes up right yeah the food chain wakes up. You start seeing bugs hatch. Well, the bugs hatch, and then the minnows come behind them, and then the bluegill come behind them, and then the smallmouth come behind them. So that early spring is a time when I just start seeing more fish, more activity in the river. And um, mid-spring, late spring is spawn for me, pre-spawn and spawn. Okay. Um, so that's when the water temperature hits 60 and stays there. On a, on a regular basis. It can dip back in the nights, but during the day, it's hitting 60, 65, and it's staying there, and that's when we see the spawning and pre-spawn activity, and that's that heavy feeding. I've got to get bulked up. Um, that's when you start seeing fish busting bait fish up on the banks and mm -hmm. really getting aggressive about their eating. Willing to chase just about anything. Yeah, they'll yeah, chase yeah. a lot. Um, and, and the spawn, they're the, kind of the same way, but it's a different chase right it's get out of my nest yeah sure. i don't fish the spawning fish ever there's plenty of fish that aren't spawning or have spawned and are done on the river you don't have to fish the bedded fish um, so they don't all spawn at the same time no you, you generally can target not i mean you in in areas they will but on a little creek this year you know i came into one area in at the end of april beginning of may and there were beds everywhere two miles down river no beds anywhere mm -hmm. and it was a spawning ground and then a week later there were beds there so, you know, they just kind of move with where the water temperature stays consistent and when, when the urge strikes them, I guess, if you will. Probably a lot more scientific to it than that. But just as a casual observer, um, there's always somewhere to find fish that aren't on the beds. And so, you know, that, that spawn period, especially when they really get going hot and heavy, is really can be really tough. Um, they don't care about eating then. The males are fighting to get on the nest with the females, and then the females are fighting to lay their eggs and move other females off. I've got some video footage of two females knocking the sh crap out of each other yeah. to get onto really? the nest. Fighting yeah, small yeah, mouth. yeah. I, I'll show sparring you small mouth. It's really cool. I want to see that. Um, and so the males do the same thing, right? They'll they'll bust each other off and try to assert dominance that way. So really they're, you know, when they're actively spawning, they're more interested in chasing things away than they are eating them. Yeah. And you were talking about in the raft before we got here, in the spawn, you have a video of a fish or you were with a client who caught a 21 inch smallmouth, but it was like two pounds. Two yeah. Post-spawn fish. She was, she had probably hadn't been done spawning a couple of days. Okay. Her so, fins were just starting to heal up. Yeah. 
And uh, she was off the nest. She was off of the spawning ground. She was back in deep water trying to feed up, but she was just long, skinny, looking rough. And that just tells you what exactly what you're saying. During the spawn, they're just not focused on it. Yeah, you. they're just and, – and, you know, once that spawn's done, though, man, it's – get on it. Um, and, uh, you know, the females will move off first. The males will stay behind, protect the nest, run everybody off, keep the bluegill from eating the fry and the eggs. But the females – if you can drop back and find that deep pocket, that deep water, or find a riffle with good current in it, you'll find some bigger fish down there because that's where they've gone to fatten back up after yeah. a rough spawn. Um, summer, you know, I mean, summer is summer. is summer. Early summer to me is one of my favorite times. Post-spawn's amazing. Fish, all the fish are feeding. You know, the males will stay on the nest for a week, 10 days. Then they're gone, and they got to go out and feed too. Um, the blue, you know, the sunny start spawning. Mm -hmm. So you got long ear or bluegill nests all up and down the creek, right? And the smallmouth are coming in and smashing those things off the nest and eating the small, eating the sunfish. So that post spawn time is so much fun. The fish are active. You don't have to worry about pulling them off the nest or pulling them off protecting fish. And uh, they're aggressive. They're gaining weight. They're starting to get that Ozark smallmouth look back to mm -hmm, them. The fins yeah. aren't all ragged. Um, so, you know, that, that post spawn time for me is, it is so much fun. If you, to me, if you're going to catch a giant, a real giant, it's either going to be in March or it's going to be at the end of May. Okay. And as far as it sounds like that would be like, if you're wanting to go after numbers, post spawn right there. Numbers and size post spawn. If you want to get just, you know, pure numbers, it's going to be pre spawn. Okay. And uh, hit the riffles hard, find the males that are feeding up to fight, and find the females that are feeding up. But that early March, when they're just coming back and they've started feeding heavily to get, gain their weight back from the winter, that's an incredible time to be yeah. on the water. Numbers are way down. And you're hoping to move one fish or two fish in a day, but those okay. one or two fish, they're big fish. are going to be big, big fish. And, and you know, after post-spawn, we move into this. We move into summer, right? And we've got, you know, that late part of June, water flows start dropping out a little bit. Our rainfalls subside. Um, we start seeing the 80s. We start seeing the 90s. Water temperatures come up out of the low 70s into high 70s or low 80s. And so those fish just kind of, for that month or so, they kind of get really predictable. Where are they going to be? Well, they're going to be here at a plunge pool. In the day, middle of the day, mm -hmm. where there's oxygen, where there's food, early in the morning, they're probably going to be closer into the bank chasing sunfish or chasing crawfish, late in the evening back there. And then in the middle of the day, they're going to move to cover or move to the middle of the river, middle of the river on deep pools yeah. and plunge pools. So mm -hmm. they get fairly predictable. And then we get into where we are now, right? Late summer. I mean, we're coming into the dog days of summer. It's what today 98 degrees or something is supposed to be later today it's a scorcher yeah it's yeah. hot and the the water temperatures in the low 80s is mid 80s it's a lot warmer than it probably needs to be right now so that's why we're fishing areas like we're at you know we're you've noticed today we've paddled through any flat water yeah mm -hmm. and we've come to riffles to find oxygenated water and cooler water riffles and deep yeah, and we're fishing deep, and it's also easier on the fish, right? They've just got a little bit more oxygen in their system. They're, it's easier for them to recover and get through it. Um, and then in fall, we start all over from spring again. They know the days get shorter. Water temperatures start cooling down. They see a little bit of the fall rain come in, and they're like, oh, time to eat. Mm. We're going to sleep for a while. They don't really hibernate here. They don't really, you know, the fish. some of the fish up north will go complete in complete stasis where they just won't eat at all really hmm. i didn't know that these fish here will eat all winter but just a lot less you're saying a lot of them move into lakes yeah so if, if, you, if you're rivers. on a if you're on a ozark stream that's connected to one of the big impoundments bull shoals table rock tinnicoma whatever the lower i mean they can move 20 miles down river to get to find deep water hmm. to winter over at that lake and then when it you know i don't know what it is it's daylight it's water temperature and it's just the urge to get back in the river and they'll start moving back up in the fall, they kind of start sensing the the same thing. So it, it really changes how you fish these rivers. I yeah. mean, you know, in the fall, I'll start fishing 10 miles downriver from where we are right now and just fish down. From you totally there. change your location. Mm -hmm. Total, totally change my locations. Once I start noticing up here that, you know, even today we've seen plenty of fish. They're here. Yeah. 
But, you know, in, in mid-September, you know, or especially once we get that really good first cold snap um, that's sustained, you know, I'll just start noticing less fish and I'll just start moving my way down the river. Um, early fall is a lot of fun. Water temperature's cooling down. Everything else is gearing up for the winter as well. The bait fish have all moved into the river. The fry are off the nests and they're balled up around root wads or they're balled up on big rocks. Well, that's where the smallmouth are too, yeah, right? As they're chasing all that food. And uh, it's time to eat. It's time to put some weight on and, and get ready to go. So they'll chase great big streamers. They'll, you know, it's, it's, I don't know how many times in the fall you'll be going down just a stretch of water like we're on right here. And the deep side's on the left, and you'll look to your right in four inches of water, and there's a 20-inch smallmouth sitting in four inches of water waiting on bait fish. That's crazy. That's yeah, amazing. it's a lot of fun when, when that starts happening. Do um, you sight fish them when that's happening? Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, that sounds amazing. That sounds money. <laughs> I want to yeah. do that. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. And, and that just kind of goes on, you know, through, through October. Um, I guide smallmouth through the middle of November. Last year, my last smallmouth trip was, I think, the 12th. Okay. Of November. We yeah. had warm enough weather. We kept our water in the in the fifties in the day where we could still manage a few good fish. And it's another really good time to get on a on a big fish because you're not shooting for numbers on that. That's when my that's when my I'm already pretty well full for October and I've only got a few days open in September, but that's when all my ardent hardcore guys that don't give a crap about numbers come in to throw big flies and sink tips and catch big.